this is a PeopleSoft 9.2 system. Um, you're going to be able to see my phone on the left hand side. So um, one of the things that we're able to do is as users are signing in and out or accessing different parts of the application, we can inject and, and call out to those duo two factor challenges. So one of the things I'm going to do is start with a, a low level single, you know, um, employee who's actually just accessing certain parts of the access, our PeopleSoft system. So um, self-service style transactions. So one of the things that we're able to do just real briefly is to show you the the field masking because I want to show you how this works and then bring it back to how we can also bring in a two-factor challenge with that. So what we've got natively here inside of our application security platform is a way to mask the data inside of the pages. This all occurs at our rules engine, so there's no modification to the PeopleSoft system at all. We didn't change any records, pages, components to make this code work. Um, so it all occurs at our rules engine, and that's our field mask. Well, one of the things that we have layered together with the technology of the rest of our platform being able to tie in and work with Duo, for example, is now I'm accessing that direct deposit page, very similar to what I gave from the example earlier. But when we dig into it, what you'll notice is the account number is actually masked out. Because of this, we're layering a couple of different technologies together from our application security platform. But the important part is we've actually tied this into two-factor authentication. So rather than just masking the data, the user themselves has to go through that stepped up authentication. So I'm going to go ahead and click unlock via 2FA. And what you're going to see here is I get the standard duo dialogue. Just like routing talked about earlier, you have multiple different ways that you can actually deliver that token. You know, whether it's a push, a call, or a passcode, any of those type things that are, you know, a UB you know, code, any of those type things you can use. So I'm going to go ahead and do a push notification and you'll see it come in on my phone on the left hand side of which at this point I can either approve or deny. Some of the things that you'll see is where I'm located, my all those other type of things um, as to how that transaction is taking place. So I'm going to go ahead and approve that. And what you'll see is contextually, this brings us right back into the application. We understood exactly where you were. The user now has access to the account number and they're able to go, you know, and update that, make any changes that they want to do with it, um, all because they've now gone through that stepped up authentication. This is what we call very, very targeted uh, multi-factor inside of PeopleSoft. It is um, from a, a user adoption. The users love it. Um, they really understand the value of why they're having to go through that multi-factor challenge. So I'm going to go ahead and sign out and I'm going to sign back in as maybe a super high privileged user. So if I sign in as the PS account, which is the highest account inside of PeopleSoft to be able to access the application, um, you know, it often not in many institutions or in many organizations. It's also an account that's turned off. So if somebody does try to log in as the PS account, for example, what you're going to see is that two factor challenge is going to go ahead and inject right away because our security platform has built the rules defined and set up upon certain events that are happening that I want to enforce a two-factor challenge at different areas of the application. As you can see, a self-service user was able to access the application, the highest privileged account inside of the PeopleSoft system. We're going to go ahead and challenge that right away at logon. I'll do another push notification. You'll see it coming in on my phone. And I'm going to go ahead and approve that. And now I'm actually into the application and it's drop, going to drop me into the manager self-service. That's where I have picked to go. So um, right now inside of PeopleSoft, the way that by default, the multi-factor is session based. So by that, what I mean is that it's going to be valid as long as you are in, a, in that session or until the user logs out or times out. Once the user logs out or times out, then you're going to have to go through the multi-factor again when you sign in for that second time. Um, so that can be defined and controlled inside of the system. So what I'm going to do is sign in as a higher profile or a high privileged account, but not quite the, the PS account. And I'm going to show you some of our configuration and rules and how it works inside of PeopleSoft. So you can see how, how quickly you can configure and work with Duo inside of one of your systems. So I'm going to go to our configure firewall behavior. This is where all of our rules are set up. So I'm going to show you a default rule just so that you can understand our rules engine. 
Um, the rules themselves are made up of conditions and actions. When the conditions up at the top, the actions down below are going to take place. In this scenario, there aren't any conditions so that it would go ahead and log everything that's happening. If I want to add a condition in, I can go ahead and add one. And what that would do is it would then filter that transaction and look for something more refined. So what I did was I just added a user a role condition of looking for the people tools role. So in that scenario, now instead of logging everything, it's only going to log somebody who has the people tools role. So very quickly, you can refine exactly what you're looking for. So now that we've got a, a quick understanding of how the rules work, let's talk about one of the ones for implementing multi-factor and a targeted location inside of PeopleSoft, for example. So um, here are the rule. We have a couple of different conditions. One is the user is logged in. And if you think about that from a PeopleSoft perspective, they have a valid PS token. Um, so they've already authenticated. They have that authenticated session in and they're maneuvering and going around PeopleSoft. The next condition that we're looking for is report pages. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And what you're going to see is this is one of our online content groups. An online content group is looking for an area, somebody accessing a specific area of the PeopleSoft application set. So you can do that by either menu, component, or page. Uh, those of you that are really familiar with PeopleSoft, all that really is is scope. Obviously, the menus are very broad. Um, the components are narrow and the pages are extremely narrow. So we are actually looking for some sort of access under these five components. So for example, if somebody accesses anything under Query Manager, it's going to go ahead and return true. So it's all of the pages, pages under these five components that we're looking for. So flipping back over to the rule, those are the two, two conditions we're looking for. User logged in and that they're accessing one of those five components. So what's going to happen is a 2FA action is then going to come into play. So let's look at how these 2FA actions are defined. So what we've got here is um, an action. So this is a security action that's going to take place. So those conditions were meant, met, this action is going to, to kick up. So from the drop down, we can select the two-factor authentication. And then we select our provider, in this case, to duo, and we have different profiles. So maybe we have um, different um, duo accounts that we want to work with. Maybe they're the exact same account. I'll go into a reason why that might be set up that way, but it's using a duo um, profile. So let's go out and set up or show how that duo profile is configured inside of the system. So I'm going to go to telephony, open up duo. And what I'm going to do is open up the PeopleSoft 2, the one that I just had to find there. So those of you that are familiar familiar with Duo, for example, know that you can set it up with your secret key, your API key, and your Duo I key. Once you register and build this profile inside of our setup pages, that's really all you have to do to be able to work with Duo. We handle all the communication. It's just building the rules to be able to use that profile and invoke that two-factor authentication whenever you want to inside of the application. So that's how quickly you can be up and running with multi-factor and build very targeted MFA inside of your PeopleSoft system. So what we've done here is allow that configuration to be very, um, you know, just configuration on, on your side from from dealing with the PeopleSoft system. You don't have to do any coding or any of that other type of stuff. Um, the other part is, remember when I was talking about just briefly a little bit ago, um, the fact that by default, the 2FA was session based. So it was good for the entire time you were logged into that session. Well, what we've come up with is from hearing back from several of our customers is the fact that we allow you to fine tune that. So maybe there's an area of the PeopleSoft transactions, the high privilege side, that you want to challenge um, on a different basis. So rather than it being good the entire time, you know, once somebody passes it, what we found is there's high privilege users that are in the application for six to eight hours at a time and never log out. So rather than um, never challenging them, never challenging them again, what they figured out is that the security groups want to challenge them to make sure that it's not somebody else acting as them, working at their desktop, any of those type scenarios. So we allow you to expire 
for the 2FA based upon a couple of different conditions. One of them might be a time quantity. So maybe you have, going back to that PS account, I passed the authentication when I logged in. Well, maybe I want to expire that token after 20 minutes or 30 minutes or 60 minutes because it is a very sensitive account. You know, it's very important. It's very high privileged account. And we want to be able to control that a little bit easier. So um, maybe you want to base that upon time. The other thing you can do is base it upon the number of uses. So for example, we've had some commercial customers that have really come in and said, well, every fourth time or third time or fifth time somebody goes to query manager you know, in this session, we want to go ahead and prompt them for multi-factor authentication. Um, it, it just allows you to fine tune how you want that multi-factor applied, whether you want it to invoke again within the same session, those type things. But the nice part is all of that's done via configuration. So you don't have to do any custom coding to make all of that happen inside of your PeopleSoft system. So um, going back to the profile, once you know I did load the, the key information to be able to access um, the Duo side of things, really um, that's all I needed to do to be able to tie in to the rest of the conditions inside the rules. So I haven't passed 2FA in this scenario yet. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and navigate out there. So I'm going to go back to the reporting tools, for example. I'm going to open up Query, and I'm going to go to Query Manager. So what you're going to see is the Duo prompt immediately injects. That was the exact rule that we just looked at, those two conditions. The user was logged in, they accessed a certain area of the application, and we invoked that two-factor challenge. This is where they have to you know, do the pass this with Duo. So I'm going to do the push notification again. And I'll go ahead and approve that. And contextually, we're going to bring that user right back to the query manager exactly where they were requesting in the first place. Now they can go about their normal job. They've passed that very targeted MFA of, you know, trying to go in and do a query report. There's a lot of sensitive data tied to that. It makes it very streamlined, very efficient from the end users. They know exactly why they're having to go through and do that process. So as you can see, you really have the best of both worlds working with Duo and how we can integrate in with our application security platform to be able to contextually allow you to provide those two-factor challenges, whether they're you know, at login, whether they're embedded inside the application to access different levels of data, for example, um, to access high privileged parts of the application. The nice part is since it's all built inside of a rules engine, you can really define the rules exactly like you want them to provide that multi-factor challenge exactly where you need it or where it's required inside of the application.